Mobile financial services have tripled in Nigeria and other sub-Saharan African countries in the last six years, according to a new report by Ericsson. The Consumer and Market Insight report titled Mobile Financial Services on the Rise revealed that nearly half of all consumers in SSA use mobile financial services in 2021. That is more than three-fold increase in the last six years. The report also highlighted the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on mobile financial services uptake, with 54% of consumers saying that they use mobile financial services transactions more now. We will explore the framework for financial inclusion gained with a focus on mobile money operations on the show today. Welcome to Business Insight and Plus TV Africa. I am Justin Akadonia. All right, electricity generation scrapped agencies in the petroleum sector. Africa's economic growth and poultry farming rounded up business headlines for this week. Here are the highlights. Power generation companies in Nigeria have said they have suffered a loss of 1.66 trillion naira in seven years as a result of non-payment for deemed capacity. The Executive Secretary Association of Power Generation Companies, the umbrella body for the GENSCO, Dr. Joy Ogaji, disclosed this on a stakeholders' meeting on the Regulators Monitoring Program on Electricity, organized by Wole Showing Cast Center for Investigative Journalism. Ogaji said the available generation capacity dropped to 6,192.34 megawatts this year from 7,792.51 megawatts in 2020, while the average generation capacity rose to 4,120.96 megawatts from 4,050.07 megawatts. The federal government is to retain the about 1,500 employees of the defunct Department of Petroleum Resources, Petroleum Products Pricing Regulatory Agency and Petroleum Equalization Fund. Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, Timmy Silva said on Wednesday that no staff of the scrapped agencies would be sacked. He disclosed this while during meetings with employees of the affected organizations in Abuja. The International Monetary Fund, IMF, has projected a 3.7% growth rate for Sub-Saharan Africa in 2021. The Director of African Department of the Fund, Abebe Celestia, disclosed this during a press briefing on October Regional Economic Outlook for Sub-Saharan Africa in Washington on Thursday. He said the fund estimates that the Sub-Saharan Africa's economy will grow by 3.7% in 2021 and 38 in 2022. The recovery is supported by favorable external conditions on trade and commodity prices. The prices of soya beans and maize, the basic grains in poultry production, have increased by about 300% and 170% respectively, warranting the collapse of many poultry farms across the country. The Director General, Poultry Association of Nigeria, Onalo Akpa, said this in an interview with our correspondent. Akpa said the worst heat farms were those operated by small-scale poultry farmers, as most dealers in this category had closed shop due to their inability to purchase feed. He said the of production in poultry farming was about 80% grain-based and these grains were maize and soya beans. President Richip Tide Edwin says the Nigeria Toki trade volume will be expanded by $5 billion immediately to further boost socio-economic ties between the two countries. Edwin stated this when he addressed newsmen at the end of a closed-door bilateral meeting with President Muhammad Buhari at the State House Abuja on Wednesday. The president, who spoke through an interpreter, expressed the hope that the relations between the two nations would be further developed on the basis of win-win situation in the basis of mutual respect.
are the stories that rounded up business headlines for this week. Joining us on the show today to discuss the impact of mobile money on financial inclusion is Kane Del Lyonka. He is the coordinator at Money Point Lagos East Zone. Many thanks for joining us, uh, Mr. Lyonka, on the show. Thank you very much. All right, very indeed, uh, the growth of uh, financial, I mean, mobile money transactions in Nigeria is one that has actually grown, you know, astronomically because virtually everywhere you find, you know, most people are indulging in it. But the question right now is, um, how do you ensure sanity and, of course, to, uh, you know, ensure that uh, the practitioners, of course, and the people who patronize these services get value for money? Yes, um, actually, when it started then, there are some measures, but we're not so keen. But I got it at a point in time, people look at it and say, ah, I want to start this business. So, but in a way, the, we are also trying to work in, our, in, in line with CBN and some other regulatory bodies, yeah. whereby we can bring sanity into the business so that we, people won't fall victim. Or let me say, the consumers won't fall victim of some agents who are not actually supposed to be in the business. Well, as much as possible, let's try and get some sort of um, differentiation between uh, the mobile money agents, the operators, because I know there are different categories you know, of uh, operators in this particular business now. So just who uh, falls in the category of uh, an agent, uh, an operator, or just how? Or is it that uh, it's, like it's an old commerce affairs, or just how does it work? Okay. We, okay, let me just... We have mobile money operators, and we have mobile money agents. Mm. Mobile money operators are the licensed companies licensed by the central by bank the of central nigeria. bank of nigeria okay to recruit mobile money agents mm. so the operators recruit the agents the agents so the agents act in that capacity for for the for the mobile money operator okay so the mobile money operators are the big names we hear uh, say uh, the paga and um, the other the ones money are, points uh, money and, point yeah. and of course uh, yes. you know okay fine so where do you categorize uh, those who are under umbrellas and then, of course, kiosks? Well, they are also mobile money agents. They are agents? <laughs> yes. Okay. Actually, do you not have licensed agent or just anyone can be agent even if they are not under any particular operator? There is no way you won't be under any operator. So you have to? You have to. So invariably, I'm just trying to get a, a clearer picture now. For instance, um, I, uh, I'm fresh out of school. You yes. know, and I've not been able to so, get a job, and I feel that I, I can maybe be self-employed, and uh, I have seen that there is an influx and a growth of uh, agencies of uh, you know more mobile operation in Nigeria generally. So yes. all I need to do, basically in my head, I'm thinking that I just need to get a kiosk and get uh, maybe a POS machine. Do I need to go through a mobile operator, or just how do I need, or do I need to go through the banks themselves? Okay, well. The banks, so, some of some of the banks too, already have these um, licenses. Facilities, of course, yeah. Okay. To get to on board. Okay, banks too, also operators. Yes, some banks, not all banks. Oh, I see. So, but mobile money operators are actually different. They are, they are they are not banks. They started it. They started it. Banks came into it. Mm. So, like you said, if I just graduated and. Because I want to start something, I want to be an entrepreneur and everything. Mm. You want to come into the business. One, you must still liaise with a mobile money operator. Mm -hmm. But these terms and conditions will be spelled out mm. for you. These terms and you. these conditions, are they rigorous or is it something that uh, could actually, you know, be flowed away with as in something you could just uh, deal with easily and of course and, uh, not have any issues? Yes, it's a, it's a CBN, it's a CBN um, organized um, entity, business. Uh, you cannot just fall into it without the, be the necessary documentation. On the part of the agency or yes, the Yes, on the, the part uh, of the agent before you, can become, before you can become an agent. Okay. The necessary things. is like your BVN is will, be, will be requested for, your NIN, everything must be done. The, your documentation, and you must sign the agreement. They will give you an agreement to sign. You signed with the operators? Yes, you signed with the operators. Okay. So, 
Uh, so how, um, what does it really take to be a mobile money operator? You know, I know you have to be licensed by the Central Bank of Niger, but you have to have maybe some sort of, uh, you know, paid up capital. Yes, there's a capital for them, the way it is for banks. Oh, there, there is? Yes, there is capital for Care to share. Money. Yeah. Care to share with us? I, actually, I cannot remember okay. that now. Okay. But for you to be a mobile money operator, you have your initial capital, the capital that given to you by CBN. Okay, so how do we ensure sanity? I know I've asked that before, but just to be clear, because from all indications, I just read not too long ago that the federal government, uh, through the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development, uh, announced the launch of a mobile money agent program, program yes. and the uh, commencement of training for 1,850 beneficiaries <laughs> in Nigeria. Let us talk about that for just one minute, you know, because I feel that there is a need to, you know, orientate, you know, these agents, because some of them, they don't really know Mm. Uh, as the vastness of this particular you know business because to them it's just about uh, maybe uh, withdrawal depositing and um, transfers you know so just how far would do you think this particular training would go and to take uh, that uh, from that particular uh, place uh, what more training could be done because the federal government alone cannot do all of it yes uh, um, for some, something like this 1050 they want to train mm. I, I, it, it's a plus, but the thing is this, this we, we are also looking at it even from the association and even organizationally differently that we sh there are some things that needs to be done so that some people will only want to benefit from things like this. They mm -hmm. don't have a pure heart. How do you mean they want to benefit and don't have a pure heart? Yes, some people just say, okay, the federal government, because they know they will be paid some money. Okay. Okay, yes. so they're just going into it because of what they could get, not because they, they actually need, need it, their, yes. the training itself. Are, yes, they don't need it. Yeah. They only say, let me just go there. And after that, some people will be there. After the training, they might not even Practice. have a flair okay. for the business. Yeah. They say, mm, I don't like it. Because by the time you go for the training, I conducted, I was one of the facilitators in one training of recent. Yeah. When I said, so, when I told people about some the pros and cons in the mm -hmm. business. So people were like, wow, can I continue this thing? <laughs> so okay, fine. Glad you've mentioned um, pros <laughs> and cons because a lot of people, you know, they just see only the pros as it were. They feel that uh, you know, the what you need is just uh, get maybe at least 100 naira for each transaction that you do. But then what are some of the hazards, you know, involved in this particular business? Yes, some of the hazards involved. One is that it's, it's not a corporate entity. I can start the business and employ anybody. Mm -hmm. Not like the corporate entity. Okay, the, the organization I work for, I sign an agreement. Yes. So if in any, at any time I embezzle funds, mm -hmm. they will get me. They know where to trust they, know where to they have your information. Yes. But most people will start the business. You bring in... Um, a sales boy, a sales girl, to man the place for you. At the end of the day, run, whisk away with your money, mm. your capital. I have had series of reports of such, and no, they cannot even trace them where they are. Mm. Aside that, we also have um, our major, the major fact problems we have there now is the problems of. Um, most customers go to the bank to report mm. transactions that were approved, whereby they were, give, they were paid money. Okay, they, for example, a, a transaction yes. was successful. Yes. At the end of the day, the was customer goes to the bank to report. to report that this thing was not successful. Okay. And most times, banks will just automatically debit. Just like when the they've not done their own investigation? Yes, it happens like that. Because they believe that the customer that came. So came how do you, how do you, how do you protect you know your agents? I know they have several. I don't know. I know of one exactly association. I know of this Amban and Amban, all of yes. that. You know. So Amban. is it just the you know the only recognized association you know to cater to all of the issues in the yes. particular sector or subsector as it is now? Because if there are issues of um, 
I um, being an agent getting debited when they are, they, there's not been thorough investigation on the yeah. part of the bank. I mean, I'm long, running at a loss. I should have some sort of um, interest and uh, maybe an organization protecting me. Yes, uh, actually, um, I'm, presently I'm the chief aggregating officer of Amban Lagos State. Okay. Uh, we are trying our best possible to make sure that agents uh, coined, are, into the, are, are brought into this association. And we are trying our best possible to see that the association has a say. Yeah. Not because, um, we, not bec because we, we have seen all these things happening. We have a lot of cases, EFCC cases, SFU cases, police cases. Yeah. Agents, are, customers at times will even go and arrest an agent and take them to the police. I see, I went there to make a withdrawal of 100,000 naira. I was debited. Yeah. He did not give me money. At the end of the police, he still arrested the agents. It, it takes for you to even explain to the police. They even some of them will tell you that give that man his money first. Yeah. After paying the man, case won't be followed up thoroughly. But the association is actually working on things like that. Let us see. We want to get a lot of um, support from the up the let me say the the regulators. Okay, that's the CBN. CBN. We want to get recognition, at least the and police the to okay. everybody, so that at least when an agent has an issue, mm. we should be able to now trash it out, trash it out. professionally. Yes. Okay, let's talk about the future as we round off on this particular discourse. Now let's talk about the future of mobile money. You know, from what I've been told, it goes beyond cash withdrawals, uh, cash deposit, and of course, uh, you know, transfers. You know, mm. just where do you see it? Uh, you know, in the next five years, do you see a situation where there'll be more sanity and, of course, there'll be better organization? Yes, by his grace, yeah, there'll be more sanity and better organization. Because um, we, we, we have seen the pros, we have seen the problems when it started. Actually, when it started, it was not like everybody wanted it. I, I, I remember when, I, when we started then, the first customer that came to my outlet asked me, hmm, with this money, go, that I want to transfer in your place. Yeah. You understand? But now everybody has seen the, 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 that this thing is not false. Yeah. So, and most people just want to come into it to do it. And mind you, because the POS, everybody look at the POS. It's not actually a POS. We don't call it POS. We call it mobile money agents. Okay. Everybody call it POS business, POS agents. Yeah. It's not just POS agents. Now, most people just, they, when, the, when the government started, or when they started this cashless policy, we brought the that was when this thing came. We have the merchant POS and we have the mobile money agent mm. POS. But on the, uh, unfortunately, a lot of things has come into it whereby mm. even merchants. So there's so, a big future, there's a big opportunity, yes, vast potential yes, for this particular for this sector. Particular, yes, there's a very vast one for mm. this sector. All right, uh, I wish we had much. Uh, time or more time to discuss um, further because uh, there's a whole lot of interesting things that uh, you know happening in this particular industry when we talk about financial inclusion indeed we have to bring you on again and uh, just talk about um, the development uh, you know that abound them um, so far thank yeah. you so much yeah i'm grateful thanks uh, all right we have been speaking with uh a mobile money uh you know, a stakeholder, and indeed, like we have said, there's a lot we can do from this particular you know sector. And of course, uh, Kane De Olanka is the coordinator, Money Point uh, Lagos E Zone, and he joined us on the show to look at all of um, the development and, of course, um, how far we can take this particular sector. Once again, we we'll say uh, thank you for your thought and your input. Thank you very much. All right, we will conclude on housing development in Nigeria. The federal government has urged state governments to harness the opportunities in the housing sector and recommit to its development. Minister of Works and Housing, Babatunde Fashula, said this at the last day of the 10th annual meeting of the National Council of Lands and Urban Development in Lagos. We'll leave you with details of that particular report as put together by Jacinta Obuku. See you again next time. I am Justin Akadonye.
Bye for now. As the council concludes its annual meeting, the stakeholders, including commissioners, permanent secretaries, gathered to put together all the deliberations reached. The conclusion of the meeting is not without the presence of the Minister of Works and Housing, Babatunde Fashola, as he highlighted some of the strides achieved in the sector and what more is to be done. The federal government is undertaking a national housing in all states except Lagos and Rivers, which has not started. And I want to clarify that it has not started in Lagos and Rivers because their land is unique. This government has given us land in Lagos, but it is going to cost some money to sand fill it, and that will add to the cost of the construction. I seek to persuade all members of this council to go back to our states, to go and persuade our governors to recommit to housing development. Thank Host of the much, meeting, Mr. Governor, Governor Babajide Songulu, pointed that his administration morning. is poised to eradicate a housing deficit in Lagos State. We're ensuring that we look at the costs of um, um, developing that will be able to utilize the full value of the land. We need to be very smart, you know, with the kind of houses that we can build, with the kind of model. You know, when we say to people, if you don't need a four-bedroom or a five-bedroom, stay with your two-bedroom and ensure that you are efficient in your, in your allocation and your utilization of space. Next is the council's communique, which was read by the Works and Housing Minister. Approval by a council of proposals to uh, reduce the maximum advance rent payable with respect to housing for middle and working class residential houses to no more than one year to be further reduced by states who have achieved one year in order to make uh, housing more accessible and affordable for Nigerians to rent. The hope is that the resolutions made here will bring about policies that will enable inclusion and development in housing sector. Jacinta Obiuku for Plus TV Africa. Honourable Commissioners, please can you...